but let's get in that performance headspace now. It's time to go to work from here to the ground. Whatever you need to do individually, but respectfully for everyone else as well. The test match rugby is a brutal place. But we can learn a load from this and we'll get better and better and better. Heads up, well done. Let's recover, let's go. There are few things more physically and mentally draining than an international test match. Recovering for the next game is just as important as training. And for scrum half Kira Bevan, there's no place like home. Hiya. Hiya. All right. How are things? Oh, yeah, good, yeah. All right. Yeah. We've had a week off after the England game. Um, it was nice to just spend a bit more time at home, and you know we were only in two days that week, so that was pretty nice. Shayla, nice. didn't really do anything different. I've well, I've taken myself on dates. Is that weird? Yeah, so I, I took myself out for coffee. I'm trying to be more independent, so do more stuff on my own. Um, it's been quite nice actually. I've quite enjoyed it. Why would you not go get it? Have a look at it as you leisure. Going. <laughs> when the fixtures are announced, I've I've got to look at my shift pattern in work, and then if I'm working, I got to make sure I can book a shift off or, or try and swap the shift to one of the other guys. So at the moment, I've only missed one game out of the forty-one caps she's had. So uh, yeah, so I don't want to miss any more. Every time she puts a shirt on, it's uh, we proud of me, mm -hmm. you know. I think for me, when, when we played against the Barbers in, um, in the Millennium, because my mother was there, wasn't it? Mm. You'll have to say it. <laughs> God's sake. Are you right? No, it's just the last game my nan uh, came to before she passed away, so... Yeah. And you had a try. Yeah, I scored. <laughs> Which doesn't happen um... very often, does it? Alright, go back to crying. <laughs> God. Yeah, so that was probably a proud moment for me as well, so... Yeah, was a, and she didn't really come to many games either, did she? No. And she decided to come to that one, and obviously then after that COVID hit, so yeah, that was the last time she seen me play rugby for Wales, wasn't it? Is it your turn to No, swing crabs, but... Yeah, I owe a lot of my international career to my parents. I probably wouldn't have been able to play for Wales if it wasn't for them. And I probably am guilty of not showing them slash telling them how lucky I actually am. Um, but I'd like to think deep down they know, um, I'm just not very good at saying it probably, but the fact that they come to every game, they want to come to every game, whether it's home or away, it really does mean a lot and I think if I found out that they hadn't come for whatever reason I'd be absolutely livid, <laughs> so yeah. Like every aspect of the professional game, recovery has become a finely tuned art. For Wales, it's the job of sports scientist Kieran Miller to make sure the players do everything they can to hit the ground running come match day. I think recovery for me is a really broad term. I think it encompasses like everything we do outside of training. It's the other 20 hours. Girls might turn up at four and leave at eight or like our afternoon training sessions, but it's really about what they do when they're away from us or what they're doing after training. When we're in a competition phase, the biggest thing we want to have is 23 girls ready and raring to go on a Friday night. When we go and play France or on a Saturday afternoon when we're up against England, that's the biggest criteria measure for us is those 23 girls are ready to go. So we're trying to do everything we possibly can to make those girls feel good, feel fresh. When prop Gwendolyn Purse isn't playing rugby, she's a champion sheepdog trainer. Now that she's moved south to turn pro, she's had to leave the farm behind. But luckily, there's a little reminder of home just around the corner. This is Winnie. Um, she is four and a half months old and she is a border collie. So it all started with you sending me a picture of her on Instagram. And I had no plans whatsoever to have a dog. Um, and you just sent me this tiny little ball of fluff and then said that she's got a bad leg and said that you didn't, you know, you didn't know what to do with her, did you? Before I moved down, I lived on a farm in North Wales um, and I trained sheep dogs on the farm, I think, got about 20 dogs. 
which is just crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I try and see her as much as I can. And it's nice as well, because she's one of my own, so. I kept Winnie's sister, so hopefully she'll be coming down after the Six Nations when I've got more time. <laughs> when Winnie was two weeks old, um, she had a bad leg, um, so um, when she was five weeks old, Snowy adopted her. We always knew that she was potentially going to have to have a leg amputated because um, we knew that from the start. As she got older, it was obvious that you know her leg was like hindering her and stuff. So we we took her for X-rays and stuff. So three weeks ago or a month ago, she got um, the leg amputated, and she's been flying ever since. She's literally sprints around the place. Yeah, no she's issues. still as crazy as yeah. she was, <laughs> even more so now. Yeah, yeah, because there's nothing stopping her. There's nothing holding her back now. Minds refreshed, bodies recovered, it's time to get back to work. In a test week like this, when we're in a competition phase, um, we're really looking at trying to like put the icing on the cake, like really, what can we do? What extra little one, two percenters can we add in? Whole body cryotherapy is essentially a room that goes down to minus 130 degrees. It's cooled with liquid nitrogen. The girls will go in there for up to two minutes. Dropping skin temperature like that means that our body basically goes into a recovery mode. And what it does is it pulls loads of blood back in so we have lots of vasoconstriction. And then when they come out again, all that blood comes back to the peripheries, comes back to your calf, your hamstrings, your fingers. That causes a reduction in inflammation. We see a reduction in like muscle damage markers. That exposure to cold is really good for just reducing soreness and stiffness and inflammation. We'll never again. <laughs> Preparations complete, it's time to face six-time champions France, another formidable opponent under the Friday night lights. I spoke about um, a great opportunity over the next two games to do something special, okay, and it starts tonight. It starts with an 80-minute performance tonight. But let's get in that performance headspace now. It's time to go to work from here to the ground, whatever you need to do individually but respectfully for everyone else as well. It's a lovely night here in the capital. The sun has sunk beneath the horizon, but conditions still relatively mild in Cardiff for the visit of France, unbeaten France, Wales of course in third place. <laughs> Sanchez cuts back inside, sidestep, she's over the line, has she got that ball down? The try has been awarded. And you felt that's been coming for the last eight minutes. Kira Bev looks to take this one quickly. Scampers upfield and chips the ball over the top into the hands of Chloe Jacquet. And France still a counter attack of their own. Sansus, this is Jacquet, lovely step inside. There's clear space opened up in front of her. Has she got the pace to get to the line? Yes, she has! What a counter attack from France. Just when Wales look to be attacking themselves, France with a killer blow, and it shows just how clinical they can be. 26 0 the half time score amounted to climb in the second half. Let's be a little bit nastier, girls. She keep on the ref about that because they are taking girls out. She, she, she's choked Sam Dew off a ruck. <coughs> so, Natalia, you've had a neck grab in the mall. We don't accept it anymore. We're in our backyard, yeah? Let's get on front foot now. We do not get bullied. So, f 
find that edge and express it on that field. He died three. There was space on the blind side, she's gone open, Trimolier looks to pass, sails over the line, effortlessly so. Jesse Trimolier, the world player of the decade, makes things so easy here in Cardiff. It's going to be the last chance for Wales. Advantage, yeah. That one's gone immediately yeah. to ground, it is another advantage being played. And Wales thunder towards the try line, can they finish with a flourish, a reach from Sean and Harris. So Wales have the try they've been crying out for. And if we look across the stand, the flags are being held aloft. The crowd are on their feet. And it's the loudest cheer of the night by some distance. Final score here in Cardiff Arms Park. Wales 5, France 33. It's just too many errors in our game. Individual errors and unit errors, not straight the line out. We've got to work on our feed and strike at scrum. Getting a roll right front row at scrum. Like we, we lost that battle today and we've got to take it on the chin. But we get better for next week. We start better, we look at ourselves and we're flying next week, yeah? But we've got to stay together now. Big, huge week. Good. Heads up, recover, okay? We stay positive, but we accept the feedback and then we move on next week. A second tough loss against fierce opposition. The learning curve in professional rugby is steep, but the team is still making progress, and they'll be looking to prove it in the final match of the tournament against Italy.